Dracula. A moment ago, I stumbled upon a most amazing phenomenon. Something so incredible, I mistrust my own judgment. Look. Dracula. The very mention of the name brings to mind things so evil, so fantastic, so degrading. You wonder if it isn't all a dream, a nightmare. Rats. 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 Thousands. Millions of them. But no, this is no dream. This is Dracula, the original terrifying story of a maniac and a man who lived after death, lived on human blood, took the form of a vampire bat, and lured innocent girls to a fate truly worse than death. Dracula? Oh, what, what's he done to you, today? Tell me. He came to me. He opened a thing in his arms, and he made me drink. <laughs> Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Wednesday Night Scream Stream Minisodes. I'm your host, Spakenstein. I'm joined, as usual, by my very good friend, Mr. Evan Sink. Hello, and, hello. And back with us this week, Mr. Job Spake. Hi. 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 Thank you so I'm glad you're back with us, Job. Um... You know, you missed the first two episodes of The Phantom Creeps. If you're joining us uh, for the first time tonight, we're watching a 1940 movie serial called The Phantom Creeps. Uh, we, As we discussed last time, it's not that kind of serial. Um, so get, you know, Frosted Flakes and just, just Trace. Go ahead and, and get it out. Get it out. You know, all your cookie crisp jokes, whatever early 2000s cereal you guys got. Um, you just... Mm. You know, go ahead and make the reference now. The time is allowed for it. But what it's cereal. Do you think Bela Lugosi's into? Well, it's got to be Count Chocula, right? Oh yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, I would yeah. think, right? I mean, you, there are some right. boxes that actually have Lugosi's. It looks like Lugosi's image printed on it with Count Chocula kind of standing in front of him, which is such a weird, you know. <laughs> it's such a, a little collab there. Well, all the monster cereals you got. Frankenberry, Booberry. There's a werewolf one too. Yes, Count Crotula. That's you know, that's the Dracula porno that uh is long lost. It believed to be lost to time, the sands of time. It can be remade. It can be remade. We have the script. We uh, we discovered in the basement in a in a basement the script for Count yeah. Crotula, but the print. I thought, I thought Wild Bill gave you that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was going to say, actually. We went to Shadow Hawk and, you know, deep into Johnson County, North Carolina. And, and deep in Wild Bill's basement. <laughs> deep in Wild Bill's basement. And, you know, through sifting through all the marble of smoke, smoke, you know, and, and, you know, assorted Western props, we found. The script for Count Crotula, but the film was lost in a fire. So, 
um you know it is what it is this is the reality of 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 a classic cinema which count count crotchula was certainly not well bell lugosi was certainly a ladies man i can't speak to whether he was hung or not fresh but i can tell you <laughs> he was definitely a ladies man uh, <laughs> um <laughs> I mean, once he played Dracula on even on stage, the women were just swooning at his feet. They absolutely even loved back then. Him. I mean, hey, who doesn't love a, a good vampire? Right, and if you guys saw, we had the trailer for Dracula at the beginning, which is nineteen thirty-one. The serial that we're watching is nineteen forty. Nine years later, look, Ghosty actually had. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got to be packing. For sure. I can't speak to it factually. <laughs> right. Well, you know, he, you got when he, when you're a man like Lugosi who works all day and all night, you, you got to have something to keep your energy going. And at a certain point, it became morphine and other things. But who? You don't know, take morphine to get it, your energy going. Yeah. I love a nice hit of morphine. You, it really perks me up. Gives you, me a little pep. You go watch Ed Wood, and you don't tell me that he doesn't have a lot of energy after injecting whatever he's <laughs> injecting himself with. He because always Hollywood does. doesn't have to portray heroin. I trust. I trust. I trust Tim Burton. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Evan and I worked in the film. We know better than you. <laughs> whatever he was injecting himself with, Lugosi, you know, again, that's the middle to later part of his career. It's kind of sad, but the early days probably fueled by women. I got to imagine fueled by sex, but, uh, sure. but you know, Seeing. famous early thirties career kind of bottomed out in the mid thirties had a Renaissance around this time, right before this was made because some dude in California decided to do a Frankenstein Dracula double feature. And that kicked off a whole new cycle of universal monster movies, which had kind of died out for a little bit at the time. So Lugosi, this is as a result of his, the beginning of his middle career popularity. So mad scientist Lugosi, we love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's an accurate way to put it fresh. I'm not going to repeat it so eloquent, eloquently. Um, and Silarn, I love that you're, um, that you're joining us here, uh, in the chat. And, um, you know, Job, do you have anything you want to say to Silar? I think this is the first time you've had a chance to address him after the incident. Best for me, my money. And that's all he's got to, he needs to say about that. Um, no further it's elaboration. It's funny how you never see the two in the same room. Right. You, you know, mortal enemies. You just can't, you know, you just don't mix. Very volatile combination. What are you going to do? Uh, anyway, uh, so last week we did two episodes of The Phantom Creeps. This week we're just doing one. So, you know, we can, you know, we can chill a little bit with our uh, pace tonight, certainly. But, uh, yeah, we yeah. Watch this one in slow-mo. Yeah, let's watch it at um, 0.5. No, yeah, like point, not even 0.5, like 0.8 or 0.7. And that'll Point probably four seven seven repeating. Sure, that'll be just enough. That's exactly what I thought too. Fresh. Soon as Silarn decided to throw that into the conversation, you can say Hitchcock, but you can't say that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, so so Joe was reading Silarn's uh, chat message, which. You know, if you're watching this later on YouTube, you won't know what we're talking about when we're addressing the chat, especially when people are writing words that I'm not inclined to repeat. But if if Job would like to enlighten the audience with that, you know, please keep everybody updated on, um, you know, the colorful chat. Our chat is always colorful. It's one of the best parts of the show. If you're not watching live, if you're well, watching this on YouTube, you we come watch us whatever live. the hell we want in chat. Did I say that? Did I say you can yeah. say whatever the hell you want? I don't know. I don't <laughs> yeah, remember saying yes. that. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to go check the archives and see if that checks out. I don't believe it does. Uh... Yeah, so and so Silarn didn't get a chance to 
uh, I don't think Silar was joining us last week. And I, jo- I know Job wasn't joining us last week. So Job hasn't had a chance uh, to get caught up. And if you haven't, don't worry, because we found out with episode two last week, they give you a pretty thorough recap. Not only do they give you the Star Wars crawl, they also are going to give us like the last couple scenes over again. So it's more than enough. Just know Lugosi's a mad scientist. Uh, no, I don't. He's got even... a great robot in this too. He, yeah, the robot is is terrific, very impractical. Um, and Lugosi can also be invisible. <laughs> I really hope it comes back for this one. There's like he's got like drone spiders that explode. Uh, yes. People get shot at at point blank range and they don't die. So you know, or it's he's he's got the invisible man belt, the invisible man belt. Uh, you know, and cliffhangers. We got you know, it it keeps it interesting. Yes, you you know, I I love the idea of playing this game in a chat. It makes so much more <laughs> sense to play the penis game so in a chat. The loudest. Yeah, I would love to know if you find a way to, uh, you know, increase your font or or something, then you'll <laughs> then you'll be the loudest one. Uh, well, it'll be I'll tell you, it'll be the next one to, to type it all capitals. That's that'll be the, the loudest. Uh, I'm not engaging in it anyway. Uh, it was very exciting. Uh, I actually had a nightmare earlier this week that we went back to watching One Step Beyond, and I was like, oh, "What? Ha- <laughs> it's like what happened? I was enjoying Phantom Creeps. Why are we? Why are we doing this again? Why are we back to One Step Beyond? Uh, no offense to One Step Beyond, but I'm really happy to change it up. I'm, I'm happy to I, I had a fun nightmare this week. Um, I, I dreamt that someone was. Uh, like having a heart attack around me and my like cpr training just like snapped into action i did the whole are you okay you call 911 oh hell yeah and how did it did did you save him did it how did it turn out uh well i well the funny thing was i'm pretty sure i told someone to call 911 and then i myself was calling 911 and you know how hard it is to get a street address uh on your phone in a dream yeah, it's really difficult. <laughs> I don't know what numbers are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, trying to make any sense of dream logic is uh, you don't get very far. But it's funny what nightmare, what what you start to consider nightmares the older you get. You know, like right. I I had a I had a dream that I got very mad at someone and quit a job. And then I woke up, I was very mad at that. It was actually my sister. I was very mad at my sister. <laughs> then I woke up and I had to remind myself that it was just a dream. None of that's real. I have no rational reason to be upset about anything. But <laughs> it was a legit nightmare. Like, I was so mad in that moment in the dream that when I woke up, I was just disturbed. So I would consider that. That's what you get when you're an adult. That's your adult nightmare. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> less, less about... Less about getting chased by a monster, more about uh, feeling a very strong emotion toward a family member. The existential crises of literally every day, your everyday life. Like, it's an ordinary everyday thing, but magnified to a, hor- like, just stressful, tense situation. And that's a nightmare when you're older. <laughs> that's how I would put it. Um, but, you know, hey. I don't I don't have too many of them, so I count myself lucky. Um all right, well again, last week's episode was full of exciting stuff. So I'm very excited to see what chapter three of the Phantom Creeps brings us. Uh before we get started, Job and Evan, anything, you know, we got Lagosi mad scientist trying to rule the world, trying to get other countries to pay him a lot of money for his crazy inventions, intrigue, spy stuff right before World War II. What do we, we got any predictions for what Lugosi's next move is as far as uh, world domination? Well, I, 
I, I really just hope that the robot comes back just mm. so I can laugh at its dumb face. But the, the, the title of this is a little intriguing. I wasn't expecting there to be a, uh, a tower in this. It's playing it pretty straight, not really leaning into the whole gothic thing too much. Well, Unless it's just a city tower. Well, that's what I, you know, that's what I'm not clear on. Is this the tower? Is this is this crashing towers or is this crashing timbers? Hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's the question. That's my mistake. That's, that's uh... but no, but the, if you look, so we're watching this through YouTube, and if you look at the one we're watching, the chapter log on the YouTube video itself says crashing towers, but the actual title of this chapter is crashing timbers. So it's confusing. Um, so I don't know what crashing timbers are, but I'm certainly interested to find out. Um, like, what does that even mean? Crashing timbers? That sounds kind of like some nonsense if you ask me, but it sounds like the name of a club, the crashing timbers, maybe a band, maybe like a fifties doo-wop group or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It's a fifties, uh, lumberjack quartet. No, fresh. I'm not pin 15. No, I don't want to be in the club. <laughs> no, it's not happening. Get out of here with it. No, penis club. We're not, we don't. We don't do that here. Um, I know. I know. I can be number 15. All right. Well, I think if Joe Brevin, if you guys are good, if you got it queued up. Uh, are you guys good? Yeah, ready to go. All right, well, here we go. Well, maybe this is where the notation got a little confused because that looks like a tower to me. Uh, it is a tower, and it's actually the tower or castle from Bride of Frankenstein. Or it's a shot. I think it's just a model. It's only a model. Um, but it is a tower. You are correct, sir. I wasn't finished reading that. Yeah, I was going to say, I felt like the text went way too fast that time. It was a lot of text. It was too. a lot. Somebody left their pog in the, mm. in the <laughs> car. Wasn't this shot in the earlier episode? Stick. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. They're, these are scenes from the last... Oh, okay. They're still doing the recap. Right. Okay. This is more recap. Because it's a literal cliffhanger. This is where we ended last time. Oh, did he just... He was thrown from the car? Uh, I guess so. Huh. What is a pog? I don't even know what that is, right? Go to the car. Car. That spider, shoot it. Oh, it no, it's That's gonna explode. One of Zorka's mechanical devices, but it's poisonous. What are you going to do? A poisonous no, mechanical no. device. What does that mean? Hey, that isn't like a hard-boiled newspaper girl to faint. I'm not hard-boiled, and I didn't faint. I tripped. Uh. Yes, that was some supposed to be some <laughs> witty repartee.
<laughs> no, that's, you know, kind of an interesting effect. Go to the cat. <laughs> Uh, ah. Yeah. Don't worry, I will. I have a hunch one of those got to Jim Daly. He's still unconscious. It's gone. Where'd it go? I don't know. I don't know, but I wouldn't. Came. I wouldn't wear that jacket anymore. <laughs> that may be Mallory now. It is Mallory. Two of my men. Great. Right, I'm in, yeah. my boys, like my dogs. Bailed out just in time. Parker, uh, check that car for ownership. There's enough left of it. Miss Drew would like the dope, too. She'll take it back in her car, won't you? There's a lot in this case that has to be kept off the record. Car. Like fire car. Car. Right. Dark has left something behind that's even worse than dynamite. Someone evidently got hold of it. The wrong kind of publicity will hurt her. All right, I'll be careful what I put on the paper. That's swell. I knew it could count on you. <laughs> Call me at Mallory's tomorrow. Thanks, I will. What's the matter with your coat? Government and the media working together. Fighter, how to get out here? I wish you'd tell me. I chased that car from Zarkas and the driver got away, but don't ask me how. Shall I look around for him, Captain? No, it's too late. He's probably miles away from here by now. Get back to Zarkas. There's an extra Mackinac on the car here. What is that? What's a Mackinac? What is what is that? I'm not sure. Joe, do you know what that means? The jacket. What do you just have an extra jacket in the car for? <laughs> I always keep an extra jacket in the car just in case there's an exploding spider. tell us what's become of Zarka's formula. What makes you think I know anything about it? You know plenty. She pays big for that kind of information. What kind of information? Quit stalling. You know what we're talking about. I can't even Getting a lot of mileage out of this same right. bush from last we'll week. It's <laughs> always yeah. the same bush. The car is literally <laughs> moving <laughs> up. <laughs> Gotta love rear projection. Running. I can't keep track of who's who. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Oh my god. These guys look the same. Too. I know. Oh. It's they're all white guys with the same haircut and suits <laughs> and black suits and the same hat. Pretty much. What were you doing at Zarka's house? Come on, talk up. Well, I. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's the one with the fedora. <laughs> oh, that's right. Duh, of course. <laughs> they're, they're shooting in two completely <laughs> different directions. No, it's too late. <laughs> you got one of them anyway. You mean they did? Firing wildly. They fixed this one so he won't talk. It sure is good shooting for this kind of light. Much better than we were doing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need to hire those guys. They need to be on our side. Uh, there it is. Ah, there he is. Why is it so tall? No. You were going to sell me out to rank in an aspiring, were you? No, I swear. I honestly, oh, I it, it's already going to be that tall. You might oh. as well make it like you wouldn't dare to betray me. 20 feet. The still want you. It's already 10. You might as well me. double it. They think I'm dead. Now with the government and the aspiring both determined to steal my secret, 
it is necessary to share a very vital secret and knowledge with you. Mm. He trusts me. All my power. The source. But was this the same assistant from earlier? I thought yes. that he died. No. Well, he got shot a bunch, they and he just in, kept running. And then he was laying there on the ground, and they found him here in this episode, and he's fine. Great. So I don't know. There is power enough to seize or destroy the world, and only I. Zorka just found the, the most sturdy man in the country. <laughs> he's got a gut built like a like a bull moose. <laughs> Ain't no bulls. You just built like a brick us. shit house, aren't you? <laughs> 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 in, impenetrable by bullets. It would be fate to open it. Unless in the presence of these protective fumes, I discover. Great. So protective fumes. These just just keep breathing it in. Just keep deeper. <laughs> Where, deeper. Where did it come from? All right, yeah, I'm feeling pretty mellow now. Let's open this shit. <laughs> Part of a meteorite that fell in Africa centuries ago. Years of research. Okay, so this is actually stock footage from a, a different a Lagosi movie from Universal from the mid-30s. Huh. ...organized a secret expedition, attended <laughs> by ignorant natives. And, you know, again, the reality of Hollywood back in those days, you know, that, that these were the roles black actors were getting in Hollywood. Natives, servants, housekeepers. That's unfortunately what you get from Studio Hollywood. And these shots are actually of Karloff's character in that movie, which is, the movie's called The Invisible Ray, and it's more science fiction than horror. Even to conquer the world. So remember, if it is ever necessary for you to move that box. Quick, put this road flare in the in the satchel. Uh. Disaster. Okay, and we are going to actually go to a real quick break. It's just one trailer. You know, I mean, it's these episodes are 20, 21 minutes, so, you know, I like to fit in a break when I can. It's it's always good to have, you know, during the minisodes, one break, even if it's the episodes are on, or the, episodes episodes. on the shorter side. So, uh, so a lot of ridiculousness in the beginning, uh, a lot of hard trying to keep track of all these G-men and all these bad guys. Yeah, it seems like the only person that has uh, stayed dead has been his wife. Right, yeah. Yeah, she died in that plane crash and uh, hasn't emerged. But let's not rule anything out. I mean... That's true. We are... We, okay, this is a mad scientist thing. Yeah, we, we just watched the survey, literally. he If you go back and look at that, he probably got shot like 20 times. He just kept running for the longest time. And then he finally went down, but then all this other stuff happens between these, you know, the last episode and this one, and then he's alive again, even though he didn't move from the spot he went down at when he was shot. So, yes, Lagosi's just angry at the world, and that is his MO. And, you know, we got a little more backstory on him. He discovered this, whatever this substance is, and I guess it's the source of his powers. And yes, the maddest I've ever beeb. No, you already <laughs> said it. The maddest I've ever beeb. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel that sign Lord. I definitely I've been mad a lot of times. Have you ever been mad, Evan? Oh, I'm I'm always so I'm always being mad. I know. I can't stop being mad. <laughs> If you can't hear that that uh B, that's uh <laughs> just in case you're not watching the chat. Not, yeah, we're giving uh, Silar a hard time uh because instead of uh Ben he said Beeb. So now instead of Ben 
saying beef. <laughs> Quality content right here. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that footage of Lugosi putting on that crazy suit was from a movie called The Invisible Ray uh, from 1935 or six. It's a Karloff Lugosi pairing. It's all right. It's ambitious and it's more sci fi. I can never finish it. I've never been able to finish it. It always kind of bores me. Um, <laughs> which, you know, there's cool, again, there's cool imagery in it. There's cool stuff, but. You ever just sit down to watch a movie, you get about halfway through, and you just go, whew, I'm, I'm full. I don't think I can finish this movie. <laughs> Look, well, you know, Lugosi doesn't have an interesting role, and Karloff is kind of annoying in it, uh, honestly. You know. Get wrecked, Karloff. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love them both, but that movie, again, it, it's one of those things where it seemed like a lot of times that their roles would have been reversed. Maybe it would have been more interesting or if the, the roles should have were switched like, halfway through. But for some reason, a lot of times I think that it, it was set out to be one way and then it, it, it would end up getting changed to, you know, cause they're, they were paired in like nine movies together and, and not all the, only a handful were at universal, but in a lot of those universal movies, it was kind of like, it just seemed like, you know, uh, Lugosi always get the got the raw end of a deal, and I mean, but he plays a good guy in Invisible Ray. I get. I don't know. Maybe he's kind of a bad guy. Again, I haven't finished it, so I guess I can't speak to it. But <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Go watch the Invisible Ray. Uh, but again, that was that was right before his career started. Kind of from his stardom started going downhill, and then. Again, Dracula Frankenstein double feature revived his career and they made Son of Frankenstein and Phantom Creeps, which we're watching tonight. Uh, but if you know about Lugosi, what a lot of people know about his heyday was the fact that he turned down the role of Frankenstein's monster and that went to Karloff. And that's why Karloff is Karloff and Lugosi's Lugosi and they will always be considered to have a rivalry that they didn't really have. But it was Lugosi's role, you know, to to lose, and he, you know, pretty much lost it, gave it up. Uh, I mean, not even that. He just there were some things he wasn't necessarily happy with, but then they brought in a whole different director, and that director changed everything, and he wanted Karloff. So it, you know, that's the way the cookie Too crumbles. Bad. It was. I don't think. I don't think that it would have been the same movie with Lugosi as the monster because I, he's I could got a different head. He, he's got a different head, a different face and a, honestly just a different, like what he can do with his face. I mean, Lugosi's very good for like sneering and giving you the villain, like really dramatic stuff. But Karloff was really good at the subtleties and the, you know, just I don't know, he can draw out a moment in a way that Lugosi's not gonna draw it out. Um, don't get me wrong, they both hammed it up. Karloff hammed it up plenty plenty of times. But uh he knew when to ham it up. I think Lugosi again, there was a language barrier. And so that was always Well, he was a stage actor, right? Right, but he was learning phonetically when he was playing Dracula on stage in New York. He was learning how to speak English because he was having to phonetically learn his lines for the play. And that was how he would go on to learn English. And I mean, again, he was, he had been, I think, in American and Hollywood in the mid 20s before he started playing Dracula on stage. So, I mean, he. Again, in a silent movie era, you're not having to speak English. But if you were going on stage, you know, so that was probably where he right. was really. I'm, I'm just thinking if you, if you're if anyone's going to be, you know, maybe a little more hammy, you know, maybe it's going to be a stage, stage act. act. Well, and, and that's not to say, you know, Karloff started on the stage, too. Um, mm. But Karloff. 
I don't know. It's it, it, we. This is something we will be able to talk about season after season after season. So we won't get into it all here. <laughs> I, we, I'm just going to uh, show, bring you guys the trailer for Frankenstein. You know, again, that double feature is definitely pro 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 probably partly responsible for the serial we're watching tonight. So we'll see the the role that Legosi missed out on. And then when we come back, we're going to get into the second part, uh, the exciting conclusion of Crashing Timbers. So we will be right back. When this dead hand moves, the monster created by a man they called Mad is turned loose to strike terror into the hearts of men. <laughs> to shock women into uncontrolled hysteria. Elizabeth! To prey upon the innocence of children. This is the story you've heard about, talked about. The spine-tingling, blood-chilling story that stuns your emotions. Frankenstein. Don't touch that! We are back all right yeah frankenstein's monster well no dr frankenstein was a freak for sure there's no question about that um <clears throat> so i hope you guys enjoyed that trailer for frankenstein i think in the, even in that trailer you can kind of see a little of what karloff is got on display there um I don't think it shows the nuances of, you know, why maybe you could say Carl had a little bit more range than Karloff did, but that's up for debate, certainly. Um, <laughs> I won't just give it to Karloff. Right. Uh, Frankenstein's public domain, right? We'll be watching that at some point, right? No, unfortunately not. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, we could watch Edison's. We only talk about it. We could watch Edison's version of Frankenstein. Okay, but, great. Thomas Edison's version of Frankenstein. Yes, which is silent and like eighteen minutes, and you know, <laughs> kind of. Does he kill an elephant in it? Yes, he kills one elephant. Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> You know, it was cr <laughs> the footage was crudely cut in, but back in those days, it worked. Uh, you know, audiences were terrified. They they saw they saw him take that elephant down, and bring the creature to life with that same bolt of electricity. <laughs> Something to behold. But <laughs> no, we, we unfortunately uh, again, as I said last week, Universal's horror movies are not none of them except some of the silent ones are in the public domain. This is as good as it gets. The serial, the phantom creeps, as far as Legosi, a little bit of horror. There's also other genres mixed in here too. Action, sci-fi, adventure, espionage, spy. So, I mean, different things that, you know, are going to interest everybody. So not exclusively horror, but, we're going to have to wait, I think, this year. This year was either movies from 1926 and back that are in the public domain, or I can't remember if it was 26 or 27. But, you know, each year 
So what is that? So it's only like three or four years from now that Frankenstein okay. and Dracula will be in the public domain. So All right, let's go keep keep the show going. Though. If we can keep this show going for that long, we might run out of movies. But well, we'll no, we won't run out <laughs> because by then we'll have these, you know, in the cycle. So right, there's always more. There's always more. Um, <laughs> fingers crossed. And not that it would ever happen. Not that I want it to happen. I totally don't want it to happen. But there's a. I'm not even gonna say his name. There's a very terrible senator um in in the united states uh senate who is mad at disney and so he wants to change the copyright laws and take away like 30 years of protection like he wants oh, to no. like say you know things that should have expired 30 years ago are now expired and he wants to get rid of previous extensions and you can't that's unheard of you can't take away somebody what you gave somebody as far as their allowances on copyright so it's it's a whole it's a whole thing i would never i'd never want it but if that did happen then all these movies would enter the public domain and you know, we wouldn't be hurt silver linings those freaking politicians. So I certainly don't want it, but uh, give us plenty of content for this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't be an altogether bad thing. Oh, fresh. You're too clever. Yes, that would be copy wrong, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that is, I've never heard that one before, fresh. Honestly, we're going to start using that one exclusively on this show now <laughs> um your copy right i need to start saying that in my copyright disputes i'm dealing with another one right now and uh you need to copyright that word copy yeah Ooh. yeah but i wonder i bet nobody if nobody's got in on it yet <laughs> nobody take our idea and that's what we'll do copy wrong that would be great uh <laughs> so the beauty of public domain is there is no copyright and that's why we get to bring you this wonderful show so we're going to get into the exciting conclusion of episode chapter three of the phantom creeps i keep wanting to say episode three but chapter three is fine <laughs> chapter three of the phantom creeps and lugosi just told us a flashback story and the robot is standing by so let's see if we get some robot action in here yeah all right something needs to crash something needs to crash we've been waiting for a crash so without further ado here we go you will remain here on guard <laughs> Cylarn, I don't want any Bond tributes in my chat. <laughs> Before I come out of this coma yet, I've given him a new antidote. Perkins is watching his reactions. Any change, Perkins? Not yet, Dr. Mallory. <laughs> oh my. How long can he live in a state of suspended animation? That's something I'm not prepared to answer. We're dealing with a force that I don't completely understand. That doesn't mean that not necessarily, Bob. <laughs> Any luck tracing that? Yep, yeah, that's right, last Fresh. Night? Oh, no, not a bit. Uh, all identification has been removed. <laughs> I think Dr. Zucker must have sold his formula before he died, or else it's been stolen by some foreign agent. What is I with the numbers? Can I don't you get it. <laughs> weapon of aggression it would be? <laughs> Certainly can. An enemy can move in without any opposition. Oh, gosh, anyway. dang it. Silard, I Silard, you cannot do that. Or I'm gonna start doing it. Alright, I'm doing it. Hey, man. 
Have you tried it on Jim yet? Good. Anyway, Dang it, Sylar. But it confirms my belief that the antidote must contain a part of the element itself. <laughs> I'm not gonna repeat it. Paper woman is here, doctor. Again? I told her I was here. You mind if she comes in? If you insist. <laughs> you handle that story very nicely without. <laughs> hey, the doctor thinks I'm holding out. They <laughs> hey, doctor, this needle's jumping all over the place. Just since Miss Drew came in? Yes. Take her over by the door. Take her out. Close the door. Bring her back. What? Hey, what is this? I don't like wrestling. Bring her closer. It reacts to her definitely, or to something she's carrying. Empty your handbag. You got a disc on you. One of those creepy little discs. Where did you get it? Dr. Duncan's house under a withered plant. Oh, yes, I remember. I meant to take it. But that's the thing it reacts to. And that's the clue for our antidote. <laughs> Love it. Pulse is increasing. Getting stronger with every beat. Now we're here. We're back we're at the here. International School of Language. <laughs> Monk's got it. I don't know. Monk looks and acts strange, almost as though he is under a hypnotic spell. Hmm. Perhaps he is. Has it ever occurred to you that Zorka might be alive? No. What do you mean? Doctor Zorka has done some remarkable things. It's never seemed quite right to me that yes, Silar, and that is actors. Edward Van Sloan, who played My Van Helsing. Monk. Bring him to me. And he played Dr. Waldman in Frankenstein, Van Helsing in Dracula. Our leader is expecting us to I mean, great secret. if you when consider a movie with Bela Lugosi and Edward Van Sloan Dracula, then there's actually a couple, including The Death Kiss, which is an interesting murder mystery. It's not really a horror movie, but we could watch it. It's got both they're of them. They're all linked together. Yeah, all it, uh, uh, it all connects. Cinematic, cinematic universe in the web yeah, it, yeah. The i mean Arizona. six degrees of lugosi i don't know can i take this along as Zarkin no cylon certainly i'll attempt an analysis of what is on that disc it might lead directly to zorka's secret good luck come on along. Well, I hope you can get enough other information so that we can crack this case wide open. Yeah, before it cracks up. Now, if I can just get this formula properly <laughs> recorded. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. <coughs> Surprised you can even spell that, Silo. Ah! I love how he's like immediately choking. She's right there, if not arguably closer, and she's fine. Oh, hands on his throat! Oh shit! Assume the position. <laughs> 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 How do I stop this crazy thing? No, Fisto, no. <laughs> so, did they just get a really tall guy to play the robot? They must have. Either he's really tall or he's on, like, you know, stilts or boxes or something. Like, really big box shoes. Is this guy just fucking around? Yes. Those long shadows got on your nerves, they It's a little filler there for you. Around this place. Well, let's see what this can find for. Yeah, that robot, like, 
cannot leave that room because there's no set big enough for it to be. It couldn't even get through the doorway in here. They had to cut around it <laughs> multiple times. One million dollars. One million dollars. Is he stealing this, this shit? Oh. He was all offered a million dollars. Oh, he's, I guess he's taking the robot too. Good luck. Uh, oh, no, he's not. No, so strong here. Ooh. <laughs> now it's stronger. Oh, uh, this idiot is going to run right into him, isn't he? <laughs> He's going to get shot 20 times and keep running. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I don't know why he's being so careful. The dude's bulletproof. Seriously. He has <laughs> nothing to worry about. Not so strong here. Now it's stronger. <laughs> <laughs> bump, bump, bump. <laughs> nice. Ah, uh, he almost got away. They weren't totally one? ready for that at oh, all. <laughs> One of the Except they were. What's the matter? What was that? The helmet got so hot it burned my hand, and when I touched that box, it went up in smoke. Must be something pretty hot in there. Don't open that. Uh, I'll leave Doctor Mallory open. I guess you're right. Well, we'll take him to headquarters first. Right, come on. Hmm. <laughs> you and your box. They don't even know what what's in it. They're. Try to open this thing. Do not open it, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, such a good... No, not yet. Well, maybe it's just as well after what happened to that neometer. What? Hey, Bob. I wonder what's the matter with this car. The engine stopped running. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Oh. Hey, Bob, look. Oh, shit. Ah. <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. Oh. oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Invisible terror. Oh, oh fuck yeah. Wow, I guess. Yeah, I guess that would Crashing make... Towers would have been a better Crashing title. Towers probably would have been... Ah, you weren't supposed to see that. Crashing Towers probably would have made sense. More sense. Because those... What do you call those? I don't even... What are they? Trans... Transformer Towers? What do you... What are those? I, 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 I always call them Power Towers, but I don't... Power Tower. Them. Power Towers. It sounds like some kind of alcoholic, like, game or <laughs> challenge or task. Yes, it, it, you know, this is where George Lucas gets all, got all of his ideas. He got it for the crawl, for the opening crawl, for the title, The Phantom Menace. He's just, you know. This whole thing is really just Star Wars. It's all, the, you see where Star Wars came from. You see what, you know, George Lucas was just like, this is peak storytelling right here. And no better way to tell a story than in 12 different parts. So what do we have, nine? So three, they just need three more, and then they'll be just as good as Phantom Creeps. Um, <clears throat> you have to get all twelve do episodes. You remember that, do you remember that part in Star Wars where Han Solo gets shot half a dozen times, but he's fine? Yes, absolutely. You know, he shot Greedo, and then in the cut scene, actually the extended scene, Greedo got off twelve shots, and they all hit. <laughs> Han Solo, <laughs> but that vest that he wears, it's actually a bulletproof, pe bulletproof vest. It looks very thin, but it's actually made of, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away cosmic material, which is um, surprisingly well, This is magic meteorite. 
Well, and that's the beauty of science fiction. You just come up with all these crazy gadgets that can do whatever. That's how you get something like this, where he's got all these drones and this freaking mineral rock that is somehow the source of all his power and he can go invisible. I mean, there's no explanation for any of this, but science, science, uh, in fiction, and <laughs> it works. I mean, the ends. At, at the very least, we can say that the end of every one of these episodes is going to be exciting. Right. It's, I mean, that whole little sequence there at the end is pretty good. It was fun. <laughs> you know, Universal. The little model car. I mean. Right. I mean, Universal. I love that. They had the time and the money, or maybe their effects people were just sitting around on their hands, like, give us, you know on these serials let's do some crazy stuff shy fi so they yeah so they <laughs> so they're like all right let's actually go big for some of these effects so yeah i mean it was an intricate model and to you know film it from a couple different angles and to have that car and you know i mean explosions. it was explosions i mean i think i've showed it to evan before but in the movie where Lugosi played Frankenstein's monster, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. There's a great and a spoiler alert. There's a great scene at the end uh, where a dam explodes, and it is an amazing special effect. It's, it's a very impressive. It's a model, but it is super impressive. And you know, this one isn't quite as impressive as that, but it's still. You know, yeah, that you was. Don't knock models. You, you don't knock models. Good. We learned that on our film, Pool Ghouls, certainly. You know, once <laughs> once we took the time to get a model built and blow it up, we were really happy that we did because it, you know, we, we I, I had, I cobbled something together, together with some, you know, digital and, you know, not a lot, not very much, but it, you know, the model, the model is fun the model when you especially when you're just trying to have fun yeah, which have fun. that's what these serials are about you know um yeah i'm i'm excited for what was next week the invisible something so invisible terror the invisible terror so that should be a lot of fun it's you know bella lugosi mad scientist uh season we're celebrating Lugosi all season. So, um, Job, what are your thoughts on this episode of the Phantom Creeps? Considering, uh, you know, kind of coming in on episode three, uh, what's your impression? I gotta keep watching it. Do I what? Have, but I just gotta keep watching it. <laughs> you gotta keep watching it. You're not gonna stop. Yeah. You gotta, I just gotta figure it out. You gotta know what happens next. Yeah, you better not spoil it for us. Um, I, I've I had this on DVD as a kid, for maybe you know like twelve, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, something like that. And like the whole like four hours was put on a DVD, and there you know I never watched it all, so this will be the first time. So I'm excited. So thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Um, join us this. Friday for the Golem. And you know, we last week was our first episode of season two. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Evan came roaring back uh to his what were you drinking segments uh with a very appropriately titled drink last week, which was called the Mind Eraser. And certainly, I, my mind... I don't remember a thing from last week, so... My mind felt very erased, uh, certainly the next morning, I can I can tell you that. Um, so much fun doing things early in the morning when you've had a couple mind erasers the night before. I can't, <laughs> can't express enough. So, um, Evan's bringing us another great drink this week, which, Evan, I was able to make a um a card for so if you want to tell us a little oh, bit about that sure so this week's drink is the stone sour uh it is 
kind of a play on the whiskey sour. So it's one and a half parts whiskey, one part orange juice, three quarter part lemon juice, and three quarter part simple syrup. And just shake it all up with some ice, strain into a ice filled glass. Uh, it sounds pretty delicious to me. It sounds very delicious. Uh, our past two drinks have had, you know, Kahlua and, and what did last week's have? Vodka? Yeah, yeah vodka. Yeah. And, and the week before, or the time before that was also vodka. So. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> so it's good to. We, we've been on a little, you know, we've been on a little we've vodka kick. A vodka, a vodka kick. So. It's good to get a little bourbon in the mix and a little a little sour and you know uh, appropriate enough for the golem, which it is a silent movie, so stra sour. It, it's well, I think that <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll enjoy it. I think the visuals are are gonna be a lot of fun. I think the story is actually very cinematic in the way that you can see inspiration from the golem in later horror movies like in universal horror movies there's actually some parallels between the golem and frankenstein which we will talk about on friday that'll be a lot of fun so this is kind of like you asked like evan is that that would have been a good segue when you were asking you know about frankenstein being public domain frankenstein is not but the golem is it's not quite the same story but there's some similar themes and here there's some similar imagery with the movies themselves which will be a lot of fun if you squint carla kind of looks like he's made of stone right and there's actually a whole interesting thing about when lugosi was going to play the role in a makeup test uh that resembled the golem that doesn't exist now but i'll go into a little more about that when we talk um about the the golem on friday i'm very excited because it's not one that i've watched all the way through it's one of those that us you know and i got the, the dvds for this one when i was like seven or eight and i did not understand <laughs> what the movie was about within three minutes and i turned it off so <laughs> okay we're going into some kind of territory. right <laughs> kind of going in blind so i'm excited to see it for the first time as an adult and watch it all the way through and hopefully be able to keep my attention focused the whole time you know silent movies is hard but guess what we're getting it out of the way early in season two i think caligari last season was maybe it was the middle of the season maybe a little later it you know i figure hey let's just go ahead and knock it out so We'll, we'll eat our vegetables first. So then right. We can... Then we can get the meat, which is, you know, going to be some Karloff, some Lugosi, some other actors that we haven't seen yet, but are will show up in a couple other movies from across the pond. Uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Speaking of Star Wars um yeah <laughs> and uh w once we get the golem out of the way that we'll get one of their films the next week so we're getting modern too so as as an old a horror film as we're getting next week we're getting a much more recent one after that so you know we try to balance it out with the life um so please join us on friday for the golem you can catch us back here on wednesdays for the Phantom Creeps, 9 p.m. here on our, our channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, Job, Evan, thank you so much for joining me as usual. Uh, everybody, stay safe, stay safe out there and sweet screams. Which please. <laughs>